Improvement Clause 10 of the ISO 14001-2015 Hello friends, I welcome you all here at TNV Academy. In this chapter, we are going to explain you the Clause 10 of the ISO 14001-2015. This clause talks about the improvement which includes continual improvement. The term continual improvement is used to identify the needs to systematically improve different processes within the EMS in order to provide improvements overall. It is an important aspect in environmental management system. This is last section of the ISO 14001-2015 and this clause deals with the requirements for how the organization will address the non-conformities found in EMS process and corrections and corrective actions needed for this non-conformities and continual improvements in the EMS process. This clause is further divided into three main subclauses. Subclause 10.1 General Subclause 10.2 Non-conformity and corrective action Subclause 10.3 Continual Improvement Environmental performance can be improved by applying the environmental management system as a whole or improving one or more of its elements. Let's explain it by giving you an example. An organization may have a target to reduce its amount of hazardous waste by 40%. A target of 40% reduction may have been achieved over a period of two years. Excellent environmental achievement. It could be, however, that to reduce this further, to demonstrate continuous improvement in the environmental performance. While there are many ways that continual improvement can be planned within an EMS, two of the main processes identified in the requirements of ISO 14001 are the use of environmental objectives and risk-based thinking. Through the proper use of these two processes, you can see great benefits from continual improvement in your EMS. Now, let's know the reference clause within standards which is useful for this chapter. We can refer the meaning defined in clause 3 of the ISO 14001-2015 which would be helpful to understand the terms used under this clause 10. Now, let's know the external references for this chapter. Under external references, you may study the ISO 14004-2016 and ISO 14005-2019. These standards are the family standards of the ISO 14001-2015. Further, the candidates may also refer the ISO 19011, 2018 and ISO 17021 1. These are useful external materials to understand this chapter. Now, let's explain you the outcomes which you will gain through training of this chapter. After completion of this training session, you will understand the clause requirements, that is, finding of non conformities and corrective action against the same and improving the environmental performance. Under this clause, you will learn non-conformity against the EMS process and targets, analysis of non-conformity and finding the actions to address the same, corrections and corrective actions, and implementation of actions to prevent the occurrence, continual improvements to enhance the environmental performance. To verify the implementation of the requirements of this clause. Verification of documented information of non-conformities kept as evidence and corrective actions against the same. Now, we are going to give you a brief introduction of the clause 10. Clause 10 is the last clause of the ISO 14001-2015, which deals with the requirement for continual improvement to cover the suitability and adequacy of the EMS as well as its effectiveness. The requirement 
for continual improvement has been extended to ensure that the suitability and adequacy of the EMS as well as its effectiveness are considered in the light of enhanced environmental performance. There are some actions that are required that cover handling of corrective actions. Firstly, organizations need to react to the non-conformities and take action. Secondly, they need to identify whether similar non-conformities exist or could potentially occur. Some of the factors influencing improvement includes top management commitment to environmental management, setting an environmental vision or corporate policy, total involvement of employees. Green teams are being set up to tackle environmental problems. Training to employees in skills that are required to fulfill their environmental responsibilities and achieve their environmental goals. Green products process design. Designing production processes and products in such a way that the design has minimal adverse impact on the environment. Supplier management, environmental performance used as one of the criteria when choosing a supplier. Measurement. Objective measurements established to gauge the level of environmental performance. Information management. Environmental information must satisfy four main criteria. That is, timelines, accessibility, accuracy, and relevance. Now, let's know the requirement of the clause as explained in this standard. Clause 10, Improvement. Subclause 10.1, General. The organization shall determine opportunities for improvement. See 9.1, 9.2, and 9.3. And implement necessary actions to achieve the intended outcomes of its environmental management system. Subclause 10.2 Nonconformity and corrective action. When a nonconformity occurs, the organization shall point 1. React to the nonconformity and as applicable. First, take actions to control and correct it. Second, deal with the consequences, including mitigating adverse environmental impacts. Point two, evaluate the need for action to eliminate the causes of the nonconformity in order that it does not occur or reoccur elsewhere. By first, Reviewing the nonconformity. Second, determining the causes of the nonconformity. Third, determining if similar nonconformities exist or could potentially occur. Point three, implement any action needed. Point four, review the effectiveness of any corrective actions taken. Point five, make changes to the environmental management system if necessary. Corrective actions shall be appropriate to the significance of the effects of the nonconformities encountered, including the environmental impacts. The organization shall retain documented information as evidence of the nature of the nonconformities and any subsequent actions taken, the results of any corrective action. Now, coming to subclause 10.3. Continual improvement. The organization shall continually improve the suitability, adequacy, and effectiveness of the environmental management system to enhance environmental performance. Now, let's understand the mandatory documents and records to be maintained under this clause. Under this clause, the organization has to maintain one mandatory record as follows. Results of Corrective Actions Clause 10.2 The organization may also maintain the below mentioned records, but this is not mandatory. Procedure for Management of Non-Conformities and Corrective Actions Clause 10.2 Now, we will explain how to write non-conformity under this clause. If you understood the requirements of this clause and subclause, which must be implemented in an organization, then 
you can verify the implementations of the same and findings can be raised and will be categorized as non-conformity. You may categorize it minor or major by analyzing the impacts of findings. To better understand the writing of findings, kindly refer the AFAR sample format through this slide. Now, let me talk in brief about the common mistakes auditor do while auditing. It is highly recommended that being an auditor, you should avoid some common mistakes like reporting of findings without verifying the evidence, ignoring the facts, asking irrelevant questions to the organization which are not applicable and start consulting activities with the client, etc. Auditors should avoid these kind of mistakes which are very common in nature doing the audits. Dear friends, we have now come to the conclusion of this training session. See you soon with an exciting new topic. Till then, goodbye.